from our world-class health professionals and authorities. We continue to base our response on keeping Canadians as protected and as supported as possible. We assured you that as the situation evolved, our response would evolve too. As the virus continues its spread, we've decided to take increasingly aggressive steps to keep you and your family safe. D'abord, nous fermerons nos frontières aux gens qui ne sont pas citoyens aux résidents permanents du Canada. Cette mesure prévoit certaines exceptions désignées pour notamment les membres de l'équipage, les diplomates, ceux dont la famille immédiate est canadienne et pour l'instant, les citoyens américains. First, we will be, be, first, we will be denying entry to Canada to people who are not Canadian citizens or permanent residents. This measure will carve out some designated exceptions, including for air crews, diplomats, immediate family members of Canadian citizens, and, at this time, U.S. citizens. Deuxièmement, les compagnies aériennes recevront le mandat formel d'interdire à tous les voyageurs présentant des symptômes de la COVID-19 de monter dans un avion. Les compagnies aériennes effectueront une évaluation de, la ba de base de la santé de chaque passager selon les recommandations de l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada. Ça veut dire que toute personne présentant des symptômes ne pourra pas entrer au Canada. Je sais que c'est une nouvelle qui va provoquer des inquiétudes pour beaucoup de Canadiens qui sont à l'étranger. Je veux vous assurer que notre gouvernement va continuer de vous appuyer. Pour aider les Canadiens asymptomatiques à rentrer au pays, notre gouvernement mettra sur pied un programme d'aide pour les Canadiens à l'étranger. Les voyageurs canadiens pourront obtenir du financement pour les aider à rentrer au Canada ou couvrir les coûts essentiels en attendant de revenir au pays. Second, air operators will be formally mandated to prevent all travelers who prevent symptoms, present symptoms of COVID-19 to board a plane. Air operators will be required to complete a basic health assessment of every air traveler based on guidance from the Public Health Agency of Canada. This means that anyone who has symptoms will not be able to come to Canada. I know this news will spark concern among Canadians traveling abroad. I want to assure you that our government will not leave you unsupported. To help asymptomatic Canadians return home, our government will set up a support program for Canadians who need to get on a plane. Canadian travellers will be able to get financial assistance to help them with the costs of returning home or temporarily covering their basic needs while they wait to come back to Canada. Troisièmement, à partir du mercredi 18 mars, seulement quatre aéroports canadiens accepteront les vols internationaux. L'aéroport Pearson de Toronto, l'aéroport Montréal-Trudeau, l'aéroport international de Vancouver et l'aéroport international de Calgary. Pour l'instant, les vols domestiques ainsi que les vols en provenance des États-Unis, du Mexique, des Caraïbes et de Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon ne seront pas touchés par cette mesure. Les restrictions de voyage annoncées aujourd'hui ne s'appliqueront pas au commerce et aux échanges. Nous continuons de faire en sorte que le Canada puisse continuer à recevoir les marchandises importantes. Third, starting Wednesday, March 18th, only four Canadian airports will be accepting international flights. Toronto Pearson, Montreal Trudeau, Vancouver International Airport, and Calgary International Airport. At this time, domestic flights, as well as flights coming from the U.S., Mexico, the Caribbean, and Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon, will not be affected. The travel restrictions announced today will not apply to commerce or trade. We will continue to ensure the supply of important goods to Canada. I know that these measures are far-reaching. They are exceptional circumstances calling for exceptional measures. Earlier today, I had a call with our G7 partners to inform them of these important changes. From the very beginning, Canada's response has been based on the latest available science and advice from our world-class health professionals. Today, today's announcement is no different. These measures will help save lives. Depuis le début, 
C'était important pour moi que les Canadiens aient accès aux recommandations des experts et des professionnels de la santé. C'est leur savoir et leur expertise qui guide les démarches non seulement entreprises par les gouvernements, mais par les individus. La docteure Tam, les professionnels de la santé publique et nos ministres font un travail extraordinaire pour protéger la santé des Canadiens et les garder au courant des derniers, derniers développements sur une base régulière. Comme la docteure Tam l'a dit hier, les autorités de la santé publique ont administré 25 000 tests à date et leur travail continue. Pour assurer que le plus grand nombre de Canadiens possible puisse avoir accès aux dernières informations, Santé Canada fera sa mise, au pied, au, sa mise au point quotidienne au même endroit et à midi à partir de demain. Aujourd'hui, leur point de presse suivra immédiatement la mienne. Dr. Tam, public health officials and our ministers have been doing a tremendous job of keeping people safe and providing regular updates. As Dr. Tam said yesterday, public health authorities have conducted 25,000 tests to date, and this work continues. To ensure that more Canadians can have access to the latest information on COVID-19, Health Canada will be holding its daily update at the same place at noon, starting tomorrow. Today, their press conference will take place after my remarks. Les mesures annoncées aujourd'hui s'ajoutent à tout ce que notre gouvernement a fait jusqu'à présent. Vendredi dernier, le ministre Morneau a annoncé des nouvelles mesures pour appuyer financièrement les travailleurs et les employeurs à travers le pays. We will make $10 billion available in additional support for Canadian businesses. This is a tool that has worked before in difficult circumstances, and we're confident that it is going to work again. The economic impact of this pandemic is shifting hourly, and we recognize the stress and anxiety that it is causing. As I've said, we are prepared to see Canadians through this time. We will have additional measures to announce as early as tomorrow to support Canadians, particularly our most vulnerable. Right now, provinces and territories are facing different realities and risks, which means taking steps that make sense for people in each area. At the same time, we also need to keep building an aligned, Canada-wide approach. On Friday, I held a telephone meeting with the Premiers and Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, and information has been flowing continuously since. We've been in constant communication with the provinces and territories so that there are no barriers between our jurisdictions during this critical time. During the meeting, I spoke to premiers about the billion-dollar COVID-19 response fund our government has put in place, which includes support for provinces and territories and their health care systems so hospitals can prepare. We can still slow the spread of this virus, but as Dr. Tam said, that window is closing. So far, we've seen many provinces take aggressive steps to protect their communities. I want to thank them for their work. It's time to take every precaution to keep people safe. The COVID-19 Response Fund also includes support for Indigenous communities. On Friday, I spoke with First Nations, Inuit and Métis Nation leaders to discuss the work we're doing together on preparedness and mitigation efforts. Minister Miller also provided an update on our regular coordination with Indigenous partners, as well as the provinces and territories. Minister Van Dal has also been connecting with the territories and is working on exceptional measures to protect the North. We are making sure that everyone, no matter where they live, is prepared. Les mesures annoncées aujourd'hui s'ajoutent aux recommandations émises par les professionnels de la santé publique. Je tiens à rappeler à tous les Canadiens qu'ils devraient éviter les voyages non essentiels à l'extérieur du pays jusqu'à nouvel ordre. Nous, nous recommandons également à tous ceux et celles qui sont présentement à l'étranger de rentrer au pays alors qu'il est toujours possible de le faire. Je vais être clair. Si vous êtes à l'étranger, il est temps de rentrer chez vous. Si vous venez de rentrer, vous devez vous isoler pendant 14 jours. Et finalement, tous les Canadiens devraient rester chez eux. En restant chez vous, 
vous pouvez non seulement protéger votre santé et celle de vos proches, mais faire en sorte que nos professionnels de la santé et nos systèmes de santé puissent aider, aider davantage ceux qui en ont besoin. I want to remind all Canadians that they should avoid non-essential travel outside of our country until further notice. Canadian travelers should return to Canada via commercial means while it is still possible to do so. Let me be clear. If you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. If you've just arrived, you must self-isolate for 14 days. And finally, all Canadians, as much as possible, should stay home. By staying home, you can not only protect your health and that of those around you, but ensure that our healthcare professionals and our healthcare systems can focus on those who need their help. This is an adjustment for all of us. We know that staying home is an important step to protect the community and each other. We all have to do it. But I don't want to, rem uh, but I want to remind all Canadians that social distancing doesn't mean we have to stop talking to each other. Pick up the phone, write an email, FaceTime, the strength of our country is our capacity to come together and care for each other, especially in times of need. So call your friends, check in with your family, think of your community. Buy only what you need at the store. But if you're heading out to grab groceries, ask your neighbour if you can get them anything. And if you know someone who is working on the front lines, send them a thank you. See how they're holding up. In Canada, we're lucky to have outstanding healthcare professionals. I want to thank them once again for their tireless efforts to keep us all safe. At the same time, our government is doing everything it needs to do to keep you safe, to keep your family safe, and to keep our economy strong. No matter what our next steps look like, you can rest assured that we will take them together with premiers and mayors, with doctors and families and neighbours, because that is what Canadians do in difficult times. We pull together and we look after each other.